Immediately behind this barbed wire fence is the Victory engine plant. It was run by the Caterpillar Corporation of Peoria, Illinois during World War II. The plant was used by the government because they had a lot of experience in large engine construction and heavy equipment generally. This plant covered more than four or five acres of ground and employed thousands of Decatur and Central Illinois residents in what would have to be called semi-secret defense work. In 1944, the Caterpillar plant was needing help, and I had been taking a machine shop training program at Decatur High School for two years. So I went out and put my application in, and I was hired right away. I went to work on the third shift and went to high school during the daytime. Most of the people that worked there were older folks in their 50s and their 60s. I was just 16 years old. I was working at Caterpillar Tractor Company at that time, and I thought, well, all this is gonna be over before I get a chance to have any part of it. So I went down and enlisted. I spent my war time in the South Pacific with the 32nd Infantry Division, first sergeant. We went to all the Philippine Islands. I was on the invasion forces into Leyte Island. We was in Leyte for quite a while. In 1944, the government converted the plant from the radial type aircraft engine for the tank to the D-7. They were able to reach areas that were unreachable. As an example, in the South Pacific, they had to bulldoze roads and, and places for the armies to get through. I was there on a Christmas Eve, and our destination was to break the Ormoc Road. There was only one road in the Lady Island that was paved, and that was the Ormoc Road, and we were to cut that, and then, of course, that would cut off the Japanese's forces, and the Japanese was, was throwing hand grenades after us and I got one pretty close and I got a lot of shrapnel in my back. Everybody worked voluntarily, worked overtime. They were advertising in the papers, they were advertising on the radio. It was 4,400 people working there and they wanted 5,000. Everybody was uh, gung-ho. Everybody looked out for the other guys back because you can't see every direction, you know, and one case I could remember there was a fellow, his name was Ramirez. He and I was sitting, raised up to look over a hill. I was looking away and all of a sudden I heard him draw in his breath. <laughs> you know, that Japanese was watching and, and when he saw us, I guess, because I heard him cock his gun, he was that close. And uh, I guess over, over Ramirez was on he was right hand on the right side, and he, he happened to pick him instead of me. We broke through this road, and uh, the chaplain got a group together and did singing Christmas carols and goodwill toward men and all that, and I thought, well, isn't that a knock in the head here? And, you know, we just come back from one of the bloodiest little old events that we've had in all the time I'd been over there, and I just wasn't in the notion of, of uh, of singing Christmas carols about how peaceful the world should be and how we should be treating our fellow man.
Can I?